Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, we're going to be replacing a rear caliper on a Chevy S10. Now this particular model is the 4x4 crew cab. It comes with the 4.3 liter Vortec. If you need to purchase items in this video, you can always purchase them underneath my YouTube video. It'll say shop this video. I always pin it to the top comments. If you're on my website, it'll say shop this video underneath the video. Now the first step to removing this caliper, there's two ways you could do it. You could either take off the slider bolts. You got one here and then there's another one right here or you could come in here and take off these main bolts you got one here and then there's one in the back here and these are 15s and these ones right here are 14s now you can't really get to this 15 right here without removing the hydraulic line so we're gonna go ahead and take this off now right before you remove this bolt go ahead and get yourself a pan because you're gonna drip some brake fluid alright so we got 11 millimeter and you're gonna hit it downward towards the ground so there we go we got the pan under there as you can see it's dripping down in there and once we take this off we're gonna lift it up higher so it doesn't drip anymore now once you've gone ahead and taken off that line you have two copper washers you have one on here on the banjo bolt and then one here make sure you don't lose those just set those aside. So right here you can see that I have the line dripping. If I go a little bit higher, it stops dripping. So if you want to put it up that high, that's fine, go ahead. I'm going to let mine drip just a little bit because in a way it acts as like a flush. So if you look down here, I have it just dripping into the pan. Now I'm going to go inside and fill up the brake booster reservoir so that I can keep it on top. You don't want to get air in the system. So right here, it tells you what type you need, which is dot three. Let's go ahead and take that up. Mine's actually really full, but just in case, I have some dot three right here. Now make sure you put the cap back on the brake booster reservoir, because if you don't, it's gonna start dripping faster. Now that we have that brake line off, we can get access to the 215s. You got one here and one down here. Now you got those bolts out, just go ahead and pull up on the caliper and the whole thing comes out. Now having a quick look at this brake caliper, you can already see how this boot is kind of flared out. It was also missing some of the little slider grommets. They're all fat and swelled up and this one is completely gone. Basically this piston wasn't even functioning anymore. When I would hit the brake, the pads would still be loose. So it was pretty much toast. Now here we have the new caliper and a new set of pads for this caliper. If you look right here, you can see where it tells you the inlet bolt torque should not exceed 18 foot pounds. So remember that. And that would be the bolt on the line that we just took off. So basically this bolt right here, don't torque that down more any more than 18 foot pounds. Now we're gonna attempt to install this all in one shot. Put the whole caliper with pads on there and two bolts and then just put the banjo bolt back on which actually I mentioned earlier to keep the old one but you don't have to. It comes with new washers, new copper washers and a new banjo bolt which is great. Now for the sliders we're just gonna take some of this anti-seize and we're just gonna put it on the inside right here where the pads are gonna slide. So just like this. A little right here. And that should be good, just like that. Now we're gonna take this bottom lip and face it down into it. So okay, if I can get this on video. So basically you're just gonna shove this in like this. There we go. That's what you want. Just like that. And the pads are going to slide on in there. We're going to do that to this side as well, the same thing. Now we're going to take our pads and the one with the telltale, the little noise maker. This basically just lets you know when your pads are getting low, it scrapes on the rotor as it spins and makes a screeching noise. We're going to put this in the back. It has to go in the back because that's the only way. Uh, 
can fit. Now right before we put these pads in, I like to put a little bit more right here on these two because the tops kind of slide on them. So just a little bit right there. We're going to stick this one in like this. And then you're going to push down. You got to get them kind of level or else they're not going to fit properly. Push down real good. Almost. There we go. And then push all the way back. So we got that one in there. And now we're going to take our second one. And we're going to do the same thing. This one doesn't have any prongs. So just kind of get it started. You want to keep it towards the outside. You don't want to push it all the way in or else it won't go in properly. You might even have to push the slider in a little bit. But that's it. Just like that. Now that we have all that together, we're pretty much just going to take this whole caliper and we're just going to install it exactly the way we did the last one or took it off. So you got the two bolts right here. We're just going to take this whole thing and it should from the factory be spaced far enough so you can get the pads on. If not, you can take a C clamp and clamp until you push the piston back in, but that shouldn't be the case. So basically just slide the pads over, make sure you pull them all the way to give them a gap, slide the pads over, and then on the back, line the bolts up, tighten them down. So on the back, we're gonna take our original 15 millimeters, we're gonna lift it up, just kinda get them in the holes properly, right there. Just hand tighten them real quick. Take that one and then we got another one on the bottom. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to take the 15 with an impact. You can just hand tighten them. This is going into steel so you're not going into aluminum. Should be good. Now the next step, we're gonna take out this banjo bolt. Just go ahead and take it all the way out. And make sure you clean the end of the line if you got any sand on it or anything like that. So take the banjo bolt, and we're gonna take one copper washer off. Then we're gonna grab our line that's still dripping. It goes just like this, so we're gonna put the banjo bolt inside with one washer on the one side and take the other copper washer and put it on the end just like that. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to get it in the hole. And this is the one that you don't want to exceed 18 foot pounds. So go ahead tight hand tighten that in and then we'll get a I doubt we can even get a torque wrench in here to be honest. I'm just going to hand tighten it until I feel it's in a good uh, lock position. Make sure it doesn't leak and we're good. Alright, so we got that pretty much hand tightened. We're going to take our wrench. wonder if this one's 11 as well. Yep. And I'm just going to tighten it until I feel like it's clamped down pretty good. Now remember, you're going into aluminum, so once you get it tight, I would just give it a couple small wax. And I'd call that it. That's good right there. Those are clean washers, they're going to compress, crush in a nice sealed manner so you don't have to worry about old washer not compressing properly and you get some leaks. Now the next step, go ahead and drag your pan underneath this caliper and we're going to crack this bleed valve loose and we need to get all the air out of the system, out of this caliper. Most of the system doesn't have any air because it's been dripping. So you're going to pop off this rubber, rubber cap. Try not to lose it because you want to put it back in. And this one looks like it's a 10 millimeter. Let's see. Yep, it's a 10. Okay, so we're going to crack it loose. 
And remember lefty loosey, righty tighty, so we're gonna hit it that way. Just like that. All right, so I went ahead and took the cap off of the brake booster reservoir, and now we're getting some flow. If you're not getting flow and you're kinda got your truck higher up, just lower the jack a little bit so you can get this below the reservoir, which it's always gonna be below the reservoir, but in some cases, it just might be on a hilly incline and just not drip. Usually, you can gravity bleed it like we're doing right here. So I just let this drip just for a little bit. You can tell that it's actually starting to clean up. The brake fluid doesn't look as dark anymore. So if you look close at this nipple while it's dripping, just make sure that right here on the very bottom, make sure this entire hole is filled up with the fluid. So when you first start cracking it, it's only gonna be halfway and there's gonna be an air gap up top and that means that you still got air in there. Wait till the entire nipple from the bottom to the top is completely filled with fluid. And that's where we're at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. So I just wanna tighten this thing. Just hand tight until it stops. Give it a good slight lock and that's it. Remember you're going into aluminum so don't over tighten it or strip the threads. So that's pretty much it to changing out a caliper. Just go inside the vehicle and push the brake a few times. Make sure the pads are locking in, going in and out and you're good to go.